Hey, Decathlon Gamer, welcome back to PCM24 Yeti episode 47. Uh, first of May, still. The dossiers that I finished last episode up with are now into that next phase where I've gone through, I've analyzed our shortlist. I shortened it by half a dozen or so uh, that were just never going to be good enough amongst the prospects that were there and then started to make the decisions. Uh, from that point, I made a list of maybe a dozen uh, of the favorites, uh, the, the ones that I really would rather have. And I also went over my list, my nine expiring contracts. I had already eliminated three of those from contention, but after comparing the other writers that were available in the pool, uh, it became pretty clear that three of those probably not good enough one or two of them definitely not good enough so uh, at this point as we go to confirm our first dossier period only three existing contracts Zhu, Shui, and Lubers are definitely writers that I want to re-sign which means we have six available spots to fill and there are just three writers that fall into that four and a half star or better category one of them at four and a half, two five star guys. Now the four and a half star guy is mid thirties, um, just not really gonna cut it. Langalati, he's you know he's all right, but what it would have costed us, and he's thirty two, I, I think is not a good trade off. And we've already got somebody on the team in that matter who has been good for us, but you know we we've got to watch age. He was twenty nine at the time we signed him. He was thirty by the time we started this season not 32 already. <laughs> As for the other two, Maholjevic and Mikkels, uh, I'd very much like to sign them, but at five stars and at their age, they are still out of our reach. Uh, we're not signing five-star guys right now. The dossier cost and the 0% interest that each of them have, there's no way we're going to overcome that and get them at a stage where we can afford them. That being said, it already has us move on. Resigning Zhu then becomes all the more important so that we have our four, four and a half star guys continue to get a little more internal development. We should be safe in Continental Pro for next season. We're not looking to make a jump to World Tour anytime soon. We're, we're not at that phase. We have not developed that kind of interest in other riders. We've got to build our profile, and this is the year to work on that. Next year, we might sign some of those guys. So cost savings going to be up there on my list. Zhu will be the only costly one, or at least at this phase. So far, Lind, Vasilevsky, and Zayets are are the three guys we're going after. Uh, you already saw Lind last episode, but Vasilevsky and Zayets are high-end sprinter capability, but more well-rounded webs. So they're not like Zhu. They're going to be able to do a bit more hang in there on climbs, be more effective in general, but not necessarily have the quite the top speed that he'll have but close to it replacing outgoing guys lubers is what you want to retain but a lot of the three guys that are going to be going out that mid group uh, are softer end sprinters and those guys will step up into their place uh, the next target though we don't have enough dossier points now we're short by a few so we'll have a few additional to go after our next target as well is Haddad. after that things drop off uh, a lot of the choices that remain from there are prospects as sprinters. And so uh, it leaves me who's the best amongst them. And I'll have to kind of reanalyze that group to figure out who is. But there's a definite drop off from these four to everybody else. Uh, but four and three, that's seven. And I would assume I'll probably end up signing all seven. And looking at the interest levels, Zhu is the only one that's an issue but in the case of Zhu we're not starting at zero percent we're starting in the 16 to 30 range which means he does have some interest in staying with us and dossier points is nine but that's not severe I, I think there's a pretty good chance that we can get him high up fingers crossed we can get him to 100 uh, percent especially as we're getting him in early and that that would be a big help for us if we can get him to 100 percent he's the only one i'm not so sure about everybody else is already 50 percent and above and should be a pretty easy easy path towards a 100 especially now that we're continental pro so we're now at eschborn frankfurt it's a world tour race 
Uh, we have a top 10 objective on this one. This is one of those couple we got into thanks to our sponsor and they were very much interested in this race. I upped what they were asking for to that top 10 requirement. So this is gonna be a big objective for us, the, the amount of prestige we're gonna gain from our sponsor for completing this objective will be significant. Uh, Eschborn Frankfurt through and through is a sprint race, but it's not flat all the way. It's flat in the key areas, but there's five climbs along the way. But the good news that caters more towards the sprinters is that each subsequent climb gets easier than the last a couple of them repeat but ultimately the climbs get easier and easier and easier and we've now done four of the five now there are fatigue there is fatigue in the legs of our riders uh, but key guys Shu, shaw pickroll they're doing fine it's the domestiques that are taking the brunt of it and as for selection today, well, obviously, some of the riders here are sprinters. Shu is obviously the one with the, the best pace, naturally. The uh, other guys, and this is the harder climb to navigate, a couple guys escape, but they're not going to get very far. They get caught very quickly. But those accelerations hurt, but I'm, I'm not going with them. Uh, at this point, I'm allowing us to drift backwards. Got plenty of time to recover our position. Chang is dropping fast, but that's as a domestique. Shu, who he was protecting, dropped a bit, but looks like we're going to retain everybody and with the uh, descent. Chang's not going to have hardly anything in the tank, but uh, the rest of the team should be just about there. And we're looking at a shrunken peloton, 97 riders left, so quite a few teams are going to be missing at least one rider. But at this point, you're getting a lot of classics type riders that are making efforts to turn this into a non-sprint race. But the nature of our team, we have to just hope that it comes back together for a sprint. We are not the team that can control this peloton and uh, organize what's going on there. The breakaway, which had eight, still has seven left. And they are a minute and a half up the road. And with 20K, well, they've got a tiny chance, but it's coming down pretty quickly right now. A uh, big chase effort and, you know, more guys Several trying to attack and to having their t attacks negated. It's down to 40 seconds now with 16K. It's there looking pretty good for the catch. Left. But Chang is done. Hallinan is done. Uh, Lubers is going to be the weak man now. Look, so we're going to gel up for him. He'll go first. And here comes the next the acceleration. It, I think it's time to front. begin a response, but only gradually because, you know, uh, Two guys are already toast, so there's only five to do this chasing. Louvers and G themselves aren't going to last very long. Uh, pick roll is going to have to do the lead out work. Shaw, and we did luck out. So uh, we had a lot of plus ones for today, but nobody on fitness peaks or anything. So the expected versus the outcome. A uh, couple minus twos offset with a plus four, and with a lot of expected plus ones, we're pretty neutral, but we. We lucked out pretty well that the two best sprinters uh, have a plus two and a plus four, have that good positive race day condition to help us out. Uh, I'm, I'm a little nervous about going this early with loopers, but we'll only push a 90, and G won't push too hard either. And yeah, see, those guys are attacking, and right now there's not really a response. But 14 riders off the front is much too much to just let the that be and right now it feels like none of these guys are chasing hard enough to uh bother with them 1k from the finish is the finish on no it's straight there straight ahead of us so straight road wide road coming in for just over the last kilometer and we're still riders off front we caught some there are we getting a mixture of lapped riders here what is left ahead of us Ooh, Vanderpool, Mohoric, Bjarg. Okay, those guys that attacked are still there. Uh, we might be ride, riding for fifth place right now. Oh, and G is done too. I just hate the fact that we're down to just three guys though. Definitely a chance of the front four are not going to be caught, but I think the others will, uh, which means you got to be even th that much more on it. 
if you're going to win. But as we get down to 4K, we're going to start speeding up here with uh, pick roll. 3K, so 99. And pick roll is going to start soft sprinting. And Shaw, that's a little early for Shaw. It's just the front four, just 13 seconds. That's them ahead, but they're already inside 1K. And here goes Zhu. I'm more worried about scoring the top 10 today than I am about getting a bunch of guys in the top 10. Vanderpool hangs on, gets the win, but here comes two, three, and four with Bjerg, La Hoitza, and Mahorich. They do hang on. Uh, but Zhu gets seventh place. We do secure a top 10. We were third in... The sprint. Third in the sprint's good. Uh, Shaw got 16th, so at least a few extra points there. But the main thing we needed here was to please the sponsors, and this will do it. Not the super success. Sadly, that breakaway is what took that away, right? Take away four guys, move up four spots. It's a podium. Maybe Matthew Vanderpool's good enough to still complete the sprint and finish ahead of us and maybe that knocks us down to fourth place instead of seventh regardless that still would have been a super success right top five and above would have been a super success so sad and disappointing on that part but we clearly didn't have the firepower to be the ones pulling them back as we were short as it was on on the way into that finish as the five climbs did definitely do some damage to the uh the four domestiques for the day and you know left us too short before we even started and the other two guys definitely did not last long they got us from 13k down to seven uh those three guys but that left us a long ways to go for just three riders and well, i guess we had a fourth right g gave us a couple kilometers in there before we got down to pickerel but yeah tough day but we got the top 10 Got the job done. Eschborn Frankfurt went well for us. However, we just had a stretch where we had only four days of racing over the course of three months. And we're just coming out of that. And so our performance barometer is really low, especially for Continental Pro Division as we're being, you know, compared there now. So our first offer that came in over that break stretch was just over a million, a little bit less than what we're making right now our second offer just came in now post eschborn frankfurt as we're starting the tour of hungary for the exact same amount so even though we just had a big success to build our profile to build our uh, our rating yeah it actually hasn't gone well uh, in all we have four six star objectives but the last one is after the deadline anyway so we have three six star objectives rolling into the end of june and from that it looks like our best time to secure sponsorship for the coming year will be end of june early july will probably be the period where uh, the most notable things are happening for a couple of reasons one uh, the sponsor objectives and, and having successes hopefully will get us where we need to be but additionally uh, I, I think we're looking at a scenario where the national championships of which canada right is one of those objectives crack at the top five in the time trial it's going to take some work I, I think having all the national championships and having a lot of riders from smaller nations in the pool should get us some results and suddenly make our visibility much higher uh, compared to others temporarily and that's probably the period where an offer is going to come in that's a lot higher uh, than what we've seen otherwise so have a feeling that that's going to be when we're going for our sponsor in the short term uh, we got to just sit back and wait for the tour of Norway and you know do what we need to do and get a top 10 because despite being a hundred percent successful so far uh, our sponsors aren't terribly happy with us three successes a super success for one of them right a win when they wanted a top 10 and yet not much doing with the sponsors uh getting that 15 races will certainly help us and i don't know where we're at on total wins for the season but i think it's something along the, the lines of five or six uh, but if we can grab a like six easy wins at national championships for a few guys that are dominant in their nation 
that can go a long way to you know doubling our our total and getting us just about there on that win 15 but we definitely want that to happen uh at this phase so we, we've got to grab a few more wins along the way uh, on our way to that objective and if we have to we might have to throw in a couple weaker races in the calendar just to help boost that if if need be Oh, yeah, we're not even anywhere near six victories yet. We're at three. Derek G has two wins on the season so far, and Panamar has one. A good performance at the Tour of Hungary is going to come down to two stages, two punchy stages, stages three and four. This is stage three. We have three circuits on a double climb. That was the first climb, short and easy. You descend into town, and then we're going to turn right around and head into the second climb, which is definitely steeper and has a lot more going on. Sprint point there, turn right, and we go up. Uh, from here, you're 5K from the summit, but we're also approaching the uh, finish line. 1K banner definitely comes back and forth, and there it is to the right is the finish line. Next time through. So we have one circuit from this point on uh, until we get there. So the top end of the climb is not hit again. And right now, tempo is not too bad, but it is bad enough that there's fatigue in the legs of every single one of our riders, even those that are protected for the day. Now, I did bring one kind of sprinter-ish guy in Pickerel. Uh, first two stages were sprints, and he did not feature in those for the moment. Peloton has... Probably just yo-yoed, but 45 off the front. But it looks like there's still about 110 uh, that are going to be in competition. And yeah, there you go. 111 now with 37k left to go. We're done with water for the day. Uh, we do need to make sure we start maintaining our position uh, a little bit better. Put a little more effort into holding near the front. This is one of those uh, difficult races because... I, Initially, I was thinking, do we want to go for the win? No. Uh, Roglic, Pagacar are both here. There's at least half a dozen riders with 79 mountain rating at this race. Like, crazy deep field for a two pro. So that being said, I think we're going to try to stack as many guys as we can into the higher placings in the GC with probably none of them cracking the top five. Uh, most likely, but we'll see. For now, field has yo-yoed again, so 56 riders, and we're going to push pretty hard to hold a position near the front on the first climb, and then right at the top, we want to set up our sprint train and attack on and, and try to lead up uh, and have as many guys left at the end for a big push. Uh-oh, the gap is widening. It's now more than two minutes. The peloton seems content to let All it right. On the base of the climb, 3K from the top, 16K overall left on the stage. And the breakaway still has a minute 55. The breakaway is going to win today? Are you kidding me? That was completely unexpected for, uh, for this field. There you go. There's the top. 13K left. We're going to start by trying to get Pickerel into position. And we, we are going to push pretty hard. Uh, a lot of teams on the other side, but this is also where the space is. So let them the sweep on over. The and they're looking pretty good on almost everybody's in position. 10K to go. We're going to catch some of those front riders, but not all. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Actually, there's still a chance. They were pretty toast. 8.7K, though. So we've done well to set up, you know, four or five guys for the finishing climb to be in position, to be well placed. And then there's just the 48 in the peloton, which also sets that part up particularly well. Uh, but Pickroll, despite a 99 effort, it's not great as a downhill rider. He's today a 69. Uh, definitely going to catch the front three guys, but I don't know if we're going to catch them all. Let's go. Four and a half K to go. Pickroll, try to hang on. 4k it's gel time for everybody so giotti pushing on pushing hard trying to catch those front three on a montez who's going to do a 97 giotti try to follow 49 riders left chasing three and we're about to catch two of them 2.3k out uh, montez is definitely doing some damage we've caught everybody now 99 this is the let's just set up everyone as best we can and right now that's what's working 
good on. It's not Pagatcher coming through there. One, 1K. 1K. Let's go for it. Huh? Let's go for it. Ponomar leading out Haglin. There's the right hander. Haglin's going to come through at the front of this with here comes Pagatcher. Uh, can we podium though? Englehart's going to come through with the extra energy. It looks like we are going to podium, which is much better than expected. That's a time bonus for Haglin. Pagatcher gets second. Uh, Ponomar fourth. So very well placed with two guys right there. Wang is also very highly placed. Are there going to be any time gaps right now? It's been 12 seconds. There might be up to the front five. Montez is up there. There's likely gaps. And then Giotti uh, at the tail end of that before you guarantee gaps to guys over a minute down. Uh, but we've got four riders in the top 20. And we managed to get somebody to uh, grab some seconds. This, this was a good outcome. Typical names near the top of the list, but Hershey was only 8th, Roglic was only 10th, uh, Sosa 13th, Simon Yates was 16th, Mohoric was 20th. That, that worked out pretty damn well for us. So on that last stage, 26 riders ended up on same time, which is good because that really limits the field and puts us in a pretty strong position. We only had one of the riders who missed that one, and no surprise, Giotti was definitely slipping off the back in fact he was there was the two groups there was the the first group on the same time as pickroll gets dropped here he is done he's out of energy and there's the chase group trying to catch the peloton that now has just 39 left i'm liking that there's just 39 chasing however the breakaway still has a substantial advantage down to five riders there uh, and we're definitely down to less firepower to chase them with Heftier climb at the finish of this one. Uh, luckily, Haglund has got a plus three today because as a team, we we got a minus three draw compared to the expected. I've got two domestiques that had this as a fitness peak or as an objective and had plus one on the expected. So um, it's not a terrible draw or anything. Minus three is pretty dang neutral. But now just, just inside 20K left, two minutes to that front group. It was three, just 510k ago, and it's down to a minute and a half, so we are coming pr back pretty quickly at them, but it's Your definitely not a given the that they will be the caught. Uh, Giotti and Wang are not going to last long, and that, that means I've got three guys to try to navigate about 12 kilometers worth of climbing, other than a little downhill section. It's broken up into two different climbs here, but yeah, this is, this is going to be tough to uh, hang in there. This is not a puncher's day. It's medium mountain type territory and yeah i think we're gonna have a hard time we're gonna gel up giotti already weighing now to try to hang in there for that little bit longer to give us some support but we're gonna have to up the uh climbing legs for these guys the hold position here we go ten and a half k to go we are climbing it's a little Two shorter than i thought it was line. but ten and a half k is definitely not easy with the likes of pagacher and roglic and yates and you know a lot of quality in this field for no, 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 I, uh, oh, hmm. I'm at an 83 and I roll up and it rolls to a 71. Uh, the front seven now have separation. The gap's closed right away. 29 riders. I'm down to the three. I'm going to wait until we get over the top of this climb and then I will organize what we have left for the last eight and a half K. Ponomar needs to gel. Ponomar needs to take control. Uh, I think we're kind of all in for Hagland now instead of as a team type effort with a uh, 7k left to go all right starting to roll through that's good we're in a good position also down to 27 riders so the 26 that were on the same time some of them may Here be out of this and it's giving attack. me three guys that are going to be in the top 25 but that's mark hershey on the attack with five and a half k to go uh, just the trying to go steady down to 23 riders now in contention and again, they sit up a little bit, and there you go. We kept it steady, and here goes Big Atcher. Don't worry about him. He's way too strong. Gel for these last two guys. Okay, the chase is on. A lot of these guys are going to burn themselves out trying to make contact with him, and then don't end up making contact with him. 3K to go. Ponomar is done. Ponomar is done. He's going to lose some time here, but he's still going to be well-placed. Down to 20 left in contention, by the way. Montez is nearly done, but he's set up Hagland well. Hagland's only got 1.9k to go, and he's in a good position for a top five here. 1.4k. 
Maybe that 85, maybe that 87. 900 meters. 900 meters. 500 meters. Haglin, go, buddy. Go, buddy. Come on, come on. Give me a podium. Give me a podium. Two days in a row. He'll be third overall. He'll be second overall, probably. He'll be second overall. Pagatcher is going to be in the lead. Um, the race leader is not around, and there's time losses here. Haglin's going to be second overall behind Taddy Pagatcher. Montez is going to be about 16th overall, and Ponomar is going to be 17th-ish overall, uh, maybe 20th overall. Uh, that's going to be good for points, good for points. Dot Pro Race, though, the race we've won Dot Pro Races, but really Haglund's won, what, one overall? Otherwise, we've been just nabbing stages here and there, so second overall behind Big Atcher when you've got Roglic and Hershey and Tish Benut and Sheffield and Skilmoza and who else do you want to throw? Vashek? Like, there's just Egon Bernal, eighth. So much quality in this field. And that's a great result. And that's without fitness peak bonuses. Haglin did secure a couple, what, plus three on each day. He lucked out on that. We lucked out on that. But it's not like the sport was any good. Nobody else had a positive race day condition. Front 12 had same time, even though we saw plenty of gaps. But it was a punchy stage, I guess. So it really takes more of a gap. Roglic losing half a minute. He's where the gap began. Wow, Montez comes in at 53, though, and a minute 45 to the Ponomar group, which included Simon Yates. That is crazy. Englehart was 215 down. Hagland is, without a doubt, going to be in second place with two time bonuses, eight seconds gained. Uh, Pagatcher clearly will be the leader, so there it is. Pagatcher leads. Hagland's eight seconds behind. Berkmo's at 10 down after a second place finish, and only nine of the initial group from before. Montez is 14th a minute 9 down. Ponomar is 18th at 201 down. Yeah, that, that that's going to be decent points for us. That's going to be real decent points. Uh, considering the depth of this field, even though it's a pro race, is that's a really good result. Berkmos with a 70 sprint somehow managed to get third on the stage, dropping the final stage, by the way, dropping Hagland to third place overall. Uh, otherwise, no changes in the standings. You see a couple guys here swapping places uh, who had been on the same time, but that's disappointing. Berkmos has no business finishing third in this stage, but he's managed to pull it off. So that was the final stage, 5 of 5, now complete. Uh, Haglin does win the under-25s, so a little bonus there. We were second as a team behind Tudor. Uh, uh, amazing that we're behind Tudor, and, you know, with the strength of the Jaco Alula and UAE and Ineos and Bora, like all that quality. And those guys are behind us. Uh, and they, it's not like they brought weak teams either. Right. We, we saw a lot of really, really quality guys, at least one of them <laughs> with a lot of these teams and a couple in the case of like Jaco Alula, all, all three of their top names were big time uh, to finish 44 minutes ahead of Astana is pretty dang good. That is going to do it for this episode, though. I'm the Cathalon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.